Hey guys, God Queen Sansa right here. I appreciate you listening to my podcast. You can follow me on Spreaker or you can, you know, check out these videos on YouTube. Either way, I appreciate it. So I wanted to talk today about my previous experiences in my last relationship dealing with a man who could not get over his ex. And throughout this entire relationship, a lot of our arguments was based around this man cutting ties completely with the woman that he was dating before me. These two still shared so many things that I had to like encourage him to let go of. The funny thing is, between the two of them, they both expressed a desire to no longer be with each other. But at the same time, they were doing a lot of dysfunctional things still together that they shouldn't have been doing. And so my request was always, you know, if you want to be with me, you're going to have to break ties with your ex. You're, you can't, you know, like have this consistent, like conversing and this, you know, still being on your ex's car insurance and still being under the same phone plan with your ex and little shit like that, it, you know, These were things that I was requesting inside of the relationship for, you know, to be, you know, broken and and eliminated because these were the ties that would continue to have them speaking with each other. And, you know, me, when when I'm involved with, with a new person, I don't talk to my ex. Like, I don't have any, like, connection with them. I don't, you know, share things with them. I end it all together. I cut it, you know, dry. And... You know, that's usually a good idea when you when you're trying to, you know, move on with your life. But, you know, I noticed in my last situation that there was a level of like Stockholm syndrome, like um, the man I was dating, his mind was easily like someone could easily control his mind. Like if, if you were smarter than him significantly or even just a little bit you could easily control his thought process and so for me I always encourage him to think independently and to live freer and to go out there and do what was best you know for him but unfortunately you know the woman before him did not do that you know she basically controlled him and had him as her lapdog and had him doing everything you know, she wanted him to do, but made him believe he was in control. You know what I mean? Like a lot of manipulation and lying and, um, you know, a lot of dysfunction and abusive shit. And, and when you're, you know, dealing with someone who um, was in a long term relationship with someone who did that to them and then they're trying to move on into a new relationship. A lot of the time that person doesn't even know how to handle being inside of that new relationship. And so I'm spending a lot of time in a relationship with this guy trying to convince him I'm nothing like his ex. Like our relationship was one big, like him comparing me to this woman. And I kept saying, no, that's not the type of woman I am. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to respond how you think I'm going to respond. Like he would think I was going to respond, you know, how she would in regards to some of his behavior. So, you know, being in a position now where I'm showing him otherwise, I'm pretty sure it's frustrating to him that I'm not behaving anything like she would because there was plenty of times where she would put him out and take him back and break up with him and then call him back and then physically hit him after an argument and cry, use tears and sickness as a way to make him feel guilty and want to be a part of a, of a relationship. Me, on the other hand, I have no desire to manipulate a man or to control his mind by playing like some little, you know, mind game with him. And because he had been playing mind games back and forth with this woman for such a long time, he is now, since we're broken up, accusing me of playing these little mind games and 
accusing me of breaking into like dating profiles and, you know, doing little petty, childish, immature shit, you know, that his ex used to do all of the time. He told me plenty of stories about how she used to be sneaky and do little childish, vindictive, revengeful shit. And so now that he and I are together and I'm not participating in any of that shit, he's still accusing me of stuff like and I'm and I'm pregnant, so I I want to contact him and focus solely on, you know, what are we going to do about the baby? And I called him yesterday to talk to him. And um the conversation went very like immature. And and I'm going to get into the details of that conversation in a minute. But the last time I talked to him was about two weeks ago. And it, the nature of the conversation was the same way. And um, when I was doing a live stream last night and people were asking me questions about him, I was saying, listen, I'm not going to talk about him anymore. Because, you know, talking about him is not really helping me move on because I, I want to move on from this situation because clearly, you know, he's starting to communicate with his ex more often. And, and when he did start communicating with her while we was together, it started being very, very detrimental to our relationship because I simply wasn't having it at first. I was like, I don't want you talking to her at all. But then when I, you know, tried to be a little bit understanding and, you know, tell him maybe he should talk to her about, our, uh, you know, the relationship, suddenly all of the, the problems started coming inside of our relationship because she's whispering in his ear. And then I go to her like, like, hey, are you whispering in his ear? You know, like I'm making videos about that. And then she contacts me and try to befriend me, trying to play with my mind as well. And then after a while, it's like I picked up on after a couple of conversations that she was full of shit and wasn't literally trying to help him move forward. She just wanted to have some sort of control over his situation with me. So, you know, finding out I'm I'm pregnant and um her not being able to have his, his children for the 14 years that they were together, you know, she started making him feel guilty talking about miscarriages that she's had, you know, I don't know if recently or, or, um, you know, years ago, but her tubes have had been tied the whole relationship. So I don't understand how you can have a miscarriage and your tubes are tied. So, you know, as I I think about it, it's like, he's not thinking, She's thinking for him. So she's basically pulling him back into, you know, this this thing where she's controlling him. So she has him thinking that all of that time that I was giving him freedom and saying, hey, if you want to be with me and you want to live free and move forward, you have to let go of your ex because she did all of this controlling like negative shit and didn't, you know, help you with your life. These are all of the things that I was telling him when I was with him. But, you know. Now that she's back talking to him, she has him back in that same cycle he was in before he was with me. So it's like he's doing all of the negative, ugly, cruel things that he was doing, you know, while he was with her. And then when, you know, before he met me. And so yesterday I was talking to him. Um, I called him. Now, people always, you know. Tell me, hey, you know, let a, let a man be a father of your child. Give him the opportunity. So here I was again. This is my second attempt. This is attempt number two to try to get this man to tell me that he wants to be a father. Okay. Yesterday I call. I have two phone numbers. And from each phone number, my number was blocked. So really, if he cared about his child or the progress of his child, the last thing he would do was block would be to block my phone number. But that's what he did. So I called from another number and he didn't answer the first time. So I called again. And I said, do you want to, um, you know, once he answered the phone, I said, do you want to be there for the baby? Like, I need to know what it is that you really want, because what you say on YouTube or what you tell other people is that you want the baby, but then you don't say anything to me to make me feel that way. And so he says, 
I want to be there for the baby. My problem is you. So I say, you know, well, yeah, my problem is you as well, but that's not really why I'm calling. Like, I just need you to, if you're going to be a part of the baby's life, for you to be respectful when we when we talk. Because, you know, all of that extra drama and arguments and stuff and little slick shit that you want to say, you know, because you're mad about the relationship. Let's leave that out of the conversation so we can be cordial and discuss the baby. So let's just respect each other. And he says, fuck you. I don't need to respect you and be cordial in order to be there for the baby. So it's the detrimental, disrespectful way he communicates with me. And this is how he's been communicating with me ever since she came back in the picture. Like, this is the the first time that my phone number has been blocked from his phone. He blocked my phone number from his phone months ago. Like... While we were still living together. And I'm like, why are you blocking my phone number? We live together. And it was right after he had started talking to her. Again, so it's like a problem. Like communicating with him has been a problem since a little bit after our pregnancy, you know, after the pregnancy started. And so I'm saying to him, I say to him, you know, you've really been difficult to deal with ever since um, I got pregnant. And he says to me, Our arguments, we were arguing before that. And I'm like, yeah, we were arguing about this damn ex-girlfriend of yours. This ex-quote-unquote ex-wife of yours. But now, the difference between then and now, you know, the before and after, before I was pregnant and after, is because now you disrespectful and, and you don't show any type of love or support or anything. Like you've become extremely difficult to communicate with. Even before when we were arguing before the pregnancy, at least he was easy to communicate with. But throughout the entire relationship, his ex has been like this major argument that we've continuously had over and over again because he's not letting go. She's not letting go, but they're both like in relationships, quote unquote, serious relationships with other people. And it's like, listen, if you two don't want to be together, like officially break up, just break up the shit. You know, if you want to be together, then work on your shit. Don't bring other people into your messiness and your drama and fuck up their life. So anyway, back to this conversation yesterday. So she, so he goes into this long, drawn out complaining as usual, like he did two weeks ago. And and me, I just really don't want to hear the bitcher right now. Like all I keep saying is, listen, I don't want to hear you talk about our relationship or whatever. I don't want to hear that shit. And so he gets into this whole, um, I'm trying to control him. And I had a motive since the beginning of our, our relationship. And I tried to trap him with pregnancy. And to me, these things are extremely hurtful to me. Because from the beginning of the relationship, I've always been very, very genuine about how I feel and what I want. And so for him to think I'm the manipulative one, because he just spent 14 years with someone who was so manipulative and someone who admitted to me that they were manipulative to him. Someone who admitted they enabled him and held him back. It's not like I'm just making this up on my own. This is literally something that she has admitted herself to me. So I'm saying to him, listen, you know, I'm not your ex. I never controlled anything you did. I always let you have lead in the situation. And now that you can no longer control me with your manipulation and lies, you feel powerless. Like you feel You know, because I'm not doing anything that he thought I was going to do. Like, he really thought I was going to be the chick that pretended that he was like this good guy. Wasn't going to tell all my family and friends and my subscribers and, you know, the fans that I have and the people that, you know, listen to me. He thought I wasn't going to tell everybody that he was doing all of this, you know, fucked up lying and manipulating stuff. You know, but when I realized that all of this was a form of mind control and some type of game that was being played, I started thinking for myself and not worrying about him. And this is, you know, after the baby came and I started realizing that this, you know, this thing with his ex was going to be a bigger issue. I just wanted to escape the relationship. You know, I just wanted, you know, 
if he wanted to sleep with other women, not just her, because he expressed his desire to sleep with other women as well. It's like this man seems to be confused about what he wants with me. You know, what he wants to do with me, what he wants to do with other women is the least of my worries. I'm trying to figure out what does he want to do with me? I'm the one sitting here, you know, pregnant and trying to do something serious and, and build a future. And his mind is off somewhere on his ex whom he spent 14 years with and doesn't have a solid, you know, anything to show for it. And so I'm just looking at him like, you know, you really have to make a decision what you want to do with your life. <coughs> Excuse me. And because he wasn't, you know, certain, I just said, hey, you know, you want to date her, get your things and make arrangements to be somewhere else. But, you know, there are plenty of conversations that we had, you know, towards the end of our relationship where he would say things to me like, you're going to take me back. You're, <coughs> I don't know why I'm having a difficult time breathing right now. I'm wheezing and everything. You're going to take me back. These are things he would say. You're going to take me back. You're going to ask me to leave. They ask me to come back. You know, he would accuse me of, you know, doing the same detrimental back and forth shit he did with her. He was like expecting me to do those same things. And now that we're broken up, it's like every time he talks to me, he accused me of something. Like he keeps accusing me of someone when he decided to put YouTube videos up. Someone decided to put up. His legal name, his social security number, and like some addresses, and I think his bank account information in his comment section or the videos that he was making about me asked him to delete his videos. He thinks I did it. But this is the first time he's accused me of stuff. So it's like he's accusing me of doing all of the things that he did inside of the relationship. And he's accusing me of doing all of the things that she did to him when they was together. So it's like she kind of trains him to be a little bit more manipulative and a little bit more of a liar and shit. She, she t taught him this weird ass way to be because she was with him for so long and she's so much older than him. She has this mind, his mind like he's still a 17 or let's say 22 year old man. When she met, they met each other. Well, he was like 22 or 23 and it's almost like he still has the same mindset of someone who is 22 or 23. She is a toxic person for him and he's she's not someone he wants to let go of. And I'm pretty sure, you know, anyone who has been in a relationship with someone with, for 14 years, maybe if that person had a lot of control over you or always took care of you or, or kind of behaved as if they was your mother or some shit, it may be difficult for you to, you know, leave them. And that's the issue that he's having. So, you know, trying to deal with a man who has the mindset of someone who is 22 and someone who is, you know, just young minded and immature, it's very difficult to even communicate with them on a cordial, mature level. So, you know, when people come to me and, you know, they're surprised that I made the choice to try to cut him off together, every time I reach out to him to try to get him to be comfortable with, you know, doing something cordial with me so he can see his baby, something immature or disrespectful always comes out of his mouth, some type of behavior. And all I'm encouraging him to do is to be cordial with me so, you know, when we do have uh, doctor's appointments or when he can come see his child, we're cordial. And the baby sees two people who are cordial with each other, but that's not what he wants. And, you know, it was unfortunate talking to him yesterday. And instead of him stepping away and having this conversation with me privately, he decides to have this conversation with me in front of the people that he works with or whoever he was around at the time. And you could hear, you know, these men, this, these people in the background laughing at him, making fun of me and saying all of this dis disrespectful stuff. And the funny thing is, it's sad when you a man and you don't have anybody around you to tell you, hey, you don't have to say these negative things or you don't have to be disrespectful to her if she's telling you or if she's asking you, you know, what you want to do about your baby. You don't have to, you know, insult her. But he got a stupid ass friend sitting next to him laughing instead of, you know, equally, you know, trying to help the situation and being mature. If you don't have any friends around you or you don't have any people around you that will encourage you to do something positive or encourage you to be 
disrespectful towards someone who is literally reaching out to you, trying to do something positive, trying to heal the situation. It's sad. You really in a dark place when you got that many ugly people around you. And that's why it's always been so easy for me to dismiss people when I see like toxic behavior, because it's like I have to get away from that if I'm no longer trying to be a toxic person myself. A lot of the, you know, mistakes I made in the past had a lot to do, lot to do with a lot of toxic behavior and me adopting some of the behaviors of the people who were around me. So in order for me to change and be better, I had to, you know, see the behavior and see the habits of people who are better than me and, you know, try to do those things, not really lose myself and, you know, still be my same self and, and try to, you know, show the good parts of me, but still, you know, having people around you who are positive helps. And it's unfortunate that my ex, the father of my child has nobody positive around him outside of me to teach him something positive. And I noticed that when I was with him, that when he would introduce me to the people he knew, it wasn't anybody around him really who had a really, really positive mindset, who would want to push him to do a lot better for himself. It was nobody around him like that. And I was the only person around him like that. And and it's unfortunate because now I'm not there. I'm not there. And, you know, there's nobody there to encourage him to be independent, think for himself, you know, control his actions and his behavior. He's just going around doing more detrimental, toxic shit. That's going to get him deeper and deeper into, you know, an ugly situation or he's going to end up back, you know, you know, playing with these games with her and unhappy with her like he been for years. But one thing I'm not going to do is let him juggle both of us. Definitely not going to do that. I'm just not going to participate. You know, I'm going to eliminate myself altogether. So that's what I've been doing. But, you know, dealing with somebody that can't get over their ex-wife and their ex-girlfriend, especially a man, is really like, I don't know, somewhat, you know, a disappointment. And I'm not going to, you know, sit here and try my hardest to, you know, let him, you know, encourage him to let go. I did everything I could for this man to, you know, encourage him to let go of this toxic ass relationship he was in before. And if he wants to hold on to it then that's him. Now, he isn't the first man I've been with who couldn't get over his ex. You know, you know, Chris Law was somebody that could get over his ex. You know, he was still trying to get over his first wife, who he was supposedly back married to now. And the girl that he was dating when I met him, they ended up getting married and divorced. So, you know, it's like, during his time with me, he was really basically just trying to get over his first situation, but he really, you know, loved his, his, um, you know, first wife. So he got back with her, you know? And my thing is, if that's what you want to do with your life as a man, you know, if that's what you want to do, if that situation is positive for you or helping your life, are you happy? That makes sense. But if you got all of this negative, ugly, cruel stuff and you went through all of these bad things inside of this relationship, Stockholm Syndrome will have you. You'll be wanting to like stay with somebody who was bad for you. And I can't do anything about it. You know, I really, I really tried. I did the best I could, but you can't make somebody do something. So that's where I stand with Priest and I'm not talking about Priest anymore in any of my live streams. This will be my last video about him. I don't know if I'm going to reach out to him again. I don't know if I'm going to do any of that. But, you know, no one wants to be disrespected every time they contact someone being nice. You know, and and I'm sitting here trying to work out a situation. You can't work out a situation with someone who doesn't want to work it out. So, you know, my initial plan to stop talking to him and just go to California would probably end up being what happens. Because, I mean, I really can't keep trying with someone who doesn't want to, you know, have a healthy situation. Like, I just want to have a healthy situation for a baby. That's it. We don't have to talk about being together. We don't ever have to be together again. But we definitely have to have, like, some type of cordial, healthy 
rapport with each other. And if he wants to be disrespectful every time I call and call me names and complain about the relationship and have an insult every time we get on the phone, and I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. So I'm not going to participate in that. So I'm probably just going to not talk to him again. You know, that's the best thing I could do. But, you know, to any woman who may be dealing with a man who can't get over his ex, leave. Leave because what you put up with is something that you're going to have to deal with in an entire relationship. So just, just let that go. That's my advice. I appreciate you listening. Have vision and stay focused. Namaste.